Today I'm going to show you why you should stop using the simple sum function since there are better solutions in Excel. Let's start with a simple example. So the first is the sum function. I'm going to start entering sum. I'm going to select the range where I have my values. I close the brackets, hit enter. Voila, I got the total value of the sales and I'll start using the filter on my table and nothing happens with myself. But if I use the subtotal function instead the sum, then it will dynamically work with my table. So let's start entering subtotal. And as you see, there are 11 functions built into one, which is awesome. You don't have to separately use different functions. But let's stay with the example. I choose number nine, which is sum. My reference is going to be my sales value again. I close the brackets, I hit enter. I change the format to the same. Here we go. But once I start using my filter, so my cell value will change according to how I use the filters on my table. I'm going to remove these. And now let me give you another example of why subtotal is good. I'm going to calculate the margin percentage this time, which is not more than the sales minus cost divided by the total sales value, right? But what if I want to get a dynamic formula? Then I'm going to say that subtotal number nine reference is the sale value minus subtotal nine reference is my cost value i put two more brackets there to include in one calculation now i'm going to divide by the total sales again I close the brackets i hit enter and here we go i got a dynamic margin calculation with using the subtotal let's see what happens if i start using my filter let's say poland and united states at hit enter and here we go the cells got updated according to the table is filtered and as you see there is a lot of option to perform mathematical calculations within the subtotal and you don't have to use separated formulas Plus, your formula is going to be dynamic and performing the calculation according to your table filter. And it's not the end. Let me show you another one. So again, we want to sum up values from a table. And the next function we are going to learn today is the aggregate function. As you see, 19 different calculations can be performed within the same formula, which is awesome. But just for the simplicity, let's stay with the sum for right now. I'm going to select nine again which is the sum function the next option kind of makes the biggest difference between the subtotal and the aggregate because under this option i can set how i want to treat the different errors or hidden rows in my formula which is not possible with the subtotal so if i don't want to aggregate numbers which are in a hidden row then i can do that which is also cool for now i'm going to select uh, number five this time which is ignoring hidden rows and the next argument what i need to set it's either an array or a reference because the aggregate function can work with array formulas i will show you in a second but for now i'm going to select the reference which is my sales value i close the brackets i hit enter here we go i summed up the values i'm going to use the filter again france netherlands poland i hit ok it summed up the values let's say i'm going to hide the netherlands row here we go it works accordingly to the options and you can also build the same margin calculation with the aggregate function now i'm going to unhide these cells i set the filters back and let me show you how it works with the array functions i'm going to remove this one and now i say aggregate and if i scroll down you will see that from the 14 up until the 19 these are the array functions basically the dynamic formulas let's say i'm going to choose the small one which is able to list out me the smallest values in a specific order so i choose the function 15 the option i'm not going to ignore anything this time comma again and now i need to select the array where i want to find those small values i'm going to select the sales this time and this time the next argument is the key because i treat it as an array within my array function so it's not going to work as a simple reference and if i simply just hit one 
and I close the brackets, I hit enter, then it will show me the smallest value from this range. And as you see, the 7000 is the smallest value. That's fine. But if I want to add more options, I go back to my formula and I remove the one, I open the parentheses and I say one, semicolon, two, semicolon, three, I close the parentheses, I hit enter. It basically showed me which are the three lowest value from my range. And there is a trick in the formula if you look at this closer. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, I double click in the cell. If you look at the array options, then I use the semicolon. But what if I want to find only the two lowest value from my range, but in a row? Then instead of using the semicolon, I'm going to use just a comma. I hit enter and here we go. The dynamic function returned back the values in a row. I hope you enjoyed this video. There are endless opportunities to combine these two formula and not using those individual siloed functions in Excel.